This video is for medical students, PA students, residents, and any other medical trainees. We're going to be talking about things that you feel like you should know by now, but nobody taught them to you, yet you're still expected to understand them and manage them when you're presenting on rounds. I'm Dr. Nikki, I'm a board certified pediatrician, and today we're going to be talking about the difference between nasal cannula and high flow nasal cannula. The difference between the two, why you might use one over the other, and understanding how to manage the various settings. So let's begin. Before we can get into talking about high flow nasal cannula, we need to make sure that we fully understand regular nasal cannula. When you hear somebody talking about a patient who is on regular nasal cannula, you'll often hear them say he's on one liter of nasal cannula or two liters or three liters of nasal cannula. But what does that mean? How much oxygen are you actually giving your patient? Well, first let's remember that all of us, when we're not on oxygen or we're just breathing room air, we're all breathing 21% FiO2. With regular nasal cannula, each liter that you are giving is increasing your FiO2 by 3 to 4%. So one liter of regular wall nasal cannula is equivalent to about 24% FiO2. Two liters is about 28% FiO2, three liters is about 32% FiO2, and so on and so forth. Now regular nasal cannula is what you're going to be choosing for somebody who just needs a little bit of supplemental oxygen. So for example, if somebody has an oxygen saturation of 87% and you put them on two liters of nasal cannula and that brings them up to 92 or 93% and they otherwise look well, they're not in respiratory distress, they just need a little bit of supplemental oxygen and what you're giving them is able to get them to the place that you need them to be, regular nasal cannula is just fine. Now, when do you want to switch to high flow nasal cannula? There are a couple of reasons why you may want to switch from regular nasal cannula to high flow nasal cannula. So first, let's talk about the difference between the two. So one of the main differences is that the air that you are delivering through high flow nasal cannula is heated and humidified air, meaning that it is a lot more comfortable and less irritating to the nares and to the mucosa and the respiratory tract. With regular nasal cannula, which is not heated or humidified, it tends to get very irritating once you go above around four liters. It's uncomfortable, it can dry you out, it can cause bleeding. So generally, if your patient is requiring more than four liters to maintain their oxygen saturation, you're gonna to wanna to move to a different option. That can be something like a simple face mask, which you can set to six to 10 liters, which will give them a little bit of extra FiO2. Or you can switch to high flow nasal cannula, which is a great option if there's any element of respiratory distress and increased work of breathing. So let's talk about high flow nasal cannula and why this could be a great option for patients with respiratory distress with or without hypoxemia. High flow nasal cannula has two main settings that you're gonna be managing. The first setting is your flow rate and the second setting is your FiO2. The third setting is temperature, which is usually set somewhere between 34 and 37 degrees Celsius. But generally as a physician, I've never had to actually do anything with this setting. Respiratory usually sets this value and we don't generally make any changes to it. So let's talk about the flow rate, which is that number in white, and then the FiO2, which is that number in green. These two settings are gonna manage two different things. Unlike with your regular wall nasal cannula, where your liters were basically equivalent to the FiO2 that we talked about, with one liter being equivalent to about 24%, two liters being 28%, that's not the case with high flow nasal cannula. So with high flow nasal cannula, your liters per minute and your FiO2 are very different. So let's start with our setting of FiO2. So with the high flow nasal cannula, you can deliver anywhere from 21% FiO2, which is essentially just keeping your patient in room air, all the way up to 100% FiO2. Remember, this is not something that you can do with the regular nasal cannula because again, you're only gonna go up to about four liters on regular nasal cannula, which is only equivalent to about 36% FiO2. So with the high flow nasal cannula, you're able to deliver all the way up to 100% FiO2 if you need it. Now the flow rate with high flow nasal cannula can go all the way up to 60 liters per minute. Now if your FiO2 is managing your hypoxemia, what is the purpose of your flow rate? With high flow nasal cannula, because you're able to deliver such a high rate of flow, you're actually able to expand the lungs a little bit. You're essentially able to deliver a small amount of PEEP or positive end expiratory pressure, which allows you to increase the functional residual capacity or the volume of air that's present in the lungs at the end of expiration. So you're opening up the airways, which allows for better gas exchange, and this will help with increased work of breathing. So in an infant with bronchiolitis, for example, who is very tachypnic, who is having a lot of retractions, maybe some head bobbing, some grunting, high flow nasal cannula can be extremely helpful with making them more comfortable with improving and reducing their work of breathing. So you may have an infant, for example, who has bronchiolitis, who has significant work of breathing, is very tachypnic, is having lots of retractions. 
but they're still maintaining their saturation above 92%. You can put them on high flow nasal cannula and set their flow rate at a certain number to help expand their lungs and help with the work of breathing. And meanwhile, you can keep the FiO2 at 21% if they don't need any supplemental oxygen at that time. If their oxygen saturation drops, you can just change that setting for the FiO2 and slowly increase it until you get their oxygen saturation to where you want it to be. So how do you determine what your flow rate should be? In pediatrics, we typically start with a flow rate of one to two liters per kilogram. So if you have a 10 kilogram child, you may set the flow rate anywhere from 10 to 20 liters per minute. And then you can titrate up or down based on your physical exam. So just to review, if you have a patient who has mild hypoxemia, who's not in any respiratory distress and just needs a little bit of supplemental oxygen, nasal cannula is probably just fine. Once you're starting to max out on your nasal cannula, if your patient is requiring more supplemental oxygen and they're already on about four liters of regular nasal cannula, or if you have a patient who has significant respiratory distress and increased work of breathing, high flow nasal cannula is a much better option because it can deliver a much higher FiO2 if needed and also helps keep the airways open to allow for better oxygenation and ventilation, which helps with work of breathing and makes your patient more comfortable. I hope that this was helpful. Let me know what other topics you feel like you have been expected to know, but nobody has taught them to you. If these are helpful, I'm happy to make a series out of it. Happy rounding, everyone.